the Joe Rogan experience. Boom, and we're live with my pal Vinny Shorman and eight-time world Muay Thai champion Liam Harrison. Yeah, thank you for having me. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Great to be here. Great to see you guys, Yeah, we too. love it. Um, listen, man, I'm a, I'm a big fan of all combat sports, but I really believe that if there's one sport that doesn't get its due, it's Muay Thai. I really don't understand why it hasn't taken off in America. I, I don't get it. I love boxing. Boxing is a lot of fun. I think Muay Thai is twice as fun. Yeah, it's twice as hard as well, I think. I mean, I fought pro boxing and I've had over 100 Muay Thai fights. It's definitely a lot harder. I mean, it is getting more mainstream now along with the MMA because most of the top MMA fighters are doing Muay Thai for the stand-up, but it's still not where it needs to be. And yeah, it's, it's weird, right? Yeah, I mean, I think what puts a lot of people off uh, Muay Thai is the uh, maybe the two-minute break. And also the, the two minute break in between rounds. Yeah, and the yeah. traditional music and stuff like that. People find that hard to take too, really. Which is, I, I mean, I love it, so I don't see that problem. But I can see outside the box with that as well. So. Well, I feel like the two minute break gives guys more of a chance to recover, yep. which makes the fights more exciting. You have more energy, and uh, I don't care about the the dance, the Y crew. That doesn't bother me. Yeah, but you're a fan, aren't you? You're a martial arts fan. I mean, to sit down and watch. I am, but watch and baseball. And Baseball's so fucking yeah, exactly. boring. It's crazy how yeah. boring it is. A lot of shows in England now, they've started to cut out the, all the traditional stuff. There's no Ramu, no Y crew. You get right. in the ring, you face off, bell goes, go straight away. So they're trying to cut little aspects of it out just to make it more media, uh, like fan-friendly, really. Yeah, we should probably explain to people that don't know what we're talking about, the, the, the dance that they do. It's called the Y crew, right? Yeah, the Ram Y. And it's, what's, what is the headband that they put on? What is that? The Mong Kong. That's the Mong Kong. Yeah. And... When you're doing the dance, the idea is like to warm up. Yeah, this, there's lots of different re lots of different reasons why these different camps believe different things. It's to do mainly to do with Buddhism, you're sealing the ring, and then taking uh, you know playing respect to your gym, your 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 coaches, your parents, etc. Isn't it, Liam? Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy doing it. it. It sort of prepares me mentally for what's about to happen. Um, I've done it in nearly all my 108 fights. Only the odd one or two where I've missed it when that's only been because. I've been told by the promoters, right, no wrong way. I enjoy doing it, but like Vinny said, like some people who come to watch it, they just want to see fights. They don't want to see that aspect of the sport as well. They just want to see people getting torn up. And in case anybody didn't catch that through that dense accent, he just said <laughs> 108 fights. That's fucking crazy, man. That's yeah. a lot of fights. It is for a Westerner, but like a lot of the ties I'm coming across, there are 200, 300 plus. I remember last year I fought a tie, and um, they said, oh, Liam's had 100 fights. That is a lot, what do you think? And he said, I'd had 100 fights when I was 15 years old. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. Uh, that was Sing Damu who said that about it. So, 100 fights yeah. when he was 15, how's that even possible? I'm not sure. He must he be fight fighting every week, every week. And yeah, just, 52 weeks a year. It's a, it's a living, isn't it? So, they, yeah. you know, they, if they don't eat, they don't, if it, in Thailand, if you don't fight, you don't eat. So, see ya. There's no uh, welfare or anything like that, so they have to do that. I had uh, former UFC uh, champion Pat Militich in yesterday, and we were talking about Muay Thai and how crazy it is that this one place, Thailand, developed this completely effective style. Like, they changed the way people fight. Yeah. I mean, they really did. Yeah, they did. If you look at all the other martial arts, whether it's karate or kung fu or anything else, like, they figured it out. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, but what's happening now is, as well, the Westerners are starting to catch them up now. I mean, remember the first time I went to Thailand, not many people were going and um, not many people knew about fighting that Thai way. More and more Westerners now are going to live there. They're staying there for long periods of time. They're getting it down, and we I can compete with the top-level ties now. Wow. Before, like back in the day, there might have been like only Ramon Decker, Danny Beal, obviously John Wayne Parr, them guys. Yeah, Ronnie Green it. as well Ron, from England. Yeah, Ronnie right, Green from right. England. But now there's a lot, a lot, especially around Europe, French fighters, top-level, British guys. We've got Danny McGowan in England. He's doing it. I mean, we are starting to really compete with people on... Top, top level now. Is Muay Thai more popular in Europe than it is in America? Yeah. There's massive shows on in Europe every weekend. Really? I mean, in, in America, there's like the main ones, Lion Fight. Um, yeah. We've got like two or three huge promotions in England now. Yokao, um, the Tanko, the French, they have massive shows on every weekend with top, top level fighters on. Um, all over Poland and every, everywhere, he's getting, he's getting huge. I'm a big fan of Lion Fight, but it seems to me that there's a lot of times where these guys come over and they're fighting someone that really doesn't belong in there with them. And you get to see like a Lurdzilla or someone like that. That would be absolutely ridiculous. That the guy's first crazy. fight against a guy who's had 400 fights, like yeah. one of the best Thai champions of this era. It were. Yeah, and his first ever professional Muay Thai fight. He got, his, got well, his head ripped off. Yeah. That's the difference between Yoko and everything else, you know? Mm -hmm. that, um, 
they do it in such a way that it, the, the, the matchmaking, Brian Calder, who does a matchmaking, our friend, um, the, the, the fights are like really, really, always, always competitive, which I really enjoy. And, and you've been doing commentary for them for how long? Uh, I've been doing commentary for Yorkau since 2011. I met Stefania in, uh, when I was working for it Showtime. And she asked me to work for them. I, I still was, have some of the old It's Showtime on my old... I have a DVR right. in my gym that's okay. like fucking 10 years old. And I still have your voice. Right. Yeah, screaming sorry about out over some pitch. I'm sorry it's about great. that. <laughs> it's great. You know, you, you know what? As, as, of, as of, I was going to say, as I've matured, but after the shenanigans we've got up to uh, <laughs> in the past, uh, you'd be surprised. But no, it's... it's um, you know, Yokal's gone from strength to strength. You know, and... and it's Showtime offshoots like Glory and, and M Fusion, who I work for now. You know, it's they're so healthy at the minute. Yeah. It's so healthy, kickboxing and Muay Thai. Is well, awesome. it's so high level. Yeah. It's just, to me, I, I mean, I've sat down and thought about this alone by myself for hours on end, trying to think, like, what would be the way to get Muay Thai more popular in America? Because mm. me, as a... A person who loves combat sports, I look at Muay Thai and I'm like, this is the pinnacle of striking sports. It's the most exciting to me. I like the clinch. I like the elbows. I love kickboxing. I love glory. But I feel like there's something missing with that. Like just the stuff that you were showing me today with all the trips and the sweeps and all that stuff that's eliminated from glory. The thing is, thing is with, with Liam as well, though, because he's got, such a, he's got a fan-friendly style. You know, he's not particularly a clincher, but he's, he's crash bang wallop in 150 mile an hour. And... I mean, I'm not going to lie, I'm his biggest fan. I mean, if you listen to the commentary, it's totally 100% biased. And I don't fucking care. And I love the kid, you know what I mean? I've known him since he was 15. I'm on my and back I, up floor, and he's like, look how well he's lying down. Oh, <laughs> he's doing it great. He wears them ankles smashing, he does. <laughs> but, you know, for me, it, it, it's his style that makes it exciting, you know? Yes, and, I and think that with, with the, me, the TV the thing, I think... To get it more popular, you need to pick and choose what fights you're putting on the TV. I think. Yeah. If you just put like a random show on with like three like fights that are terrible, but one's okay, you need to instead of it being live, maybe like pick and choose some good fights. Get it out there. Get people talking about it. Make them think. Wow, did you see that? Did you see them elbows? Did you see all that blood? Did you see them sweeps? That's what I think. Yeah. yeah that's what I. That's what I do personally. But mm. I feel like if a network like Fox took a chance and had one Saturday night and they promoted it and they we're going to show you the most dangerous stand-up strikers on the planet Earth. Like You might think that professional boxers are the most dangerous strikers, but they literally wouldn't last two rounds. They'd get no. their legs kicked out from under them, they'd get kneed in the body and elbowed in the face, they'd get cut up and clinched and thrown to the ground. It's just a better style of fighting. And a guy like you <laughs> on TV would be a whole lot of fun. I'm a big fan of the way you fight, man. You you fight like you got rabies. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like what Vinny said. Um, I've always had that that type of style, but you know what? And sometimes I've probably lost fights on points because of going wanting to go for the kill. When probably I, if I'd have changed my game plan, I probably could have won. But that's just not what I'm about. <laughs>